A very good morning and greetings to everybody who has joined us this day. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and to be glad in His presence. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mother's Day. It's Sunday morning and you know what it means. We're going to buffet together in the presence of the Lord. Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every way that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So today we're going to buffet together. If you are a mother and you know of any mother out there who needs a word, please invite them to tune in because I've got a word that I want to lift up in order to empower you as a mother to become a better person in your family, in your community, in your society, and everywhere you go. In Jesus' name, let us pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer even this morning morning and you always hear when I pray. I thank you, my Father, that your presence abide in me and abide in them that are watching over this channel. And we thank you, my God, that your word is powerful, more than a two-edged sword. Without your word, we are nothing. Heaven one day shall pass away, the earth shall pass away, but your word shall remain forever. Let your word, my Father, convict and convert. Let your word heal and soothe. Let your word make things right in somebody's life this morning in the name of Jesus right in the midst of our crooked places your word is able to make a way where nobody else can make a way we invoke the anointing of the Holy Spirit to open up the eyes of our understanding give us revelation knowledge and wisdom in the only name that makes sense the name of Jesus if you agree let me hear you say amen my god I'm so excited greetings to all the mothers out there we love Love you we bless you and we appreciate you for the things that you are doing in our lives we know that it's not easy to be a mother just to carry a normal human being on in the inside of your womb for nine months and go through all the labor pains and give birth it's not a child's play we appreciate you and we love you and may God continue to bless you for who you are in Jesus name allow me this morning to speak to you on the subject titled Desperate Times They Provoke Desperate Measures Desperate Times it means you are in a corner Remember when the Israelites have left Egypt they are now inside a corner whereby they are facing the Red Sea when they look back, the enemy, the army of the Egyptians are coming. They are closed in between. They are in a desperate situation. Whenever you are in a desperate situation, it provokes you to take desperate measures. My name is Tabo Mokotani. I'm the pastor of Royalty Baptist Church in Tabazimbi. And we trust God for greater time that we're going to spend together today. The Bible says the grass one day will wither the flowers one day will fade away but the weight of our god shall stand forever if you've got a bible hold it so that we can make a confession before we get into the word of god just say this bible is god speaking to me i believe and i receive the word of god as the truth and nothing but the truth for my life right now in Jesus name amen and amen and amen my God in the Bible there are recordings of women who were courageous in believing God for the promises that God has given them there's a woman by the name of Sarah Sarah she's the wife of Abraham God comes to Abraham in Genesis 12 and tells Abraham, Abraham, I need you to leave your father's house, take your wife and all your goods and go to the place that I will show you. Underline the place that I will show you. So that means Abraham doesn't have a map, doesn't have a GPRS. He, do he doesn't know where he's going. Now imagine this husband coming to the wife. Wife, uh, God has called me. He said, you must leave this place and go to the place where he will show us every woman will ask a question where are we going but sarah followed the calling of the husband not knowing where they are going 
She even endured a seasons and seasons of disappointment where she's been waiting for a child until she was given a child at the age of 90. If you don't call that courageous, I don't know what is the meaning of courage. There's a woman by the name of Hannah. Hannah is married to a husband called Elkanah. Elkanah is married to two women, Hannah and uh, Penina. Penina, she can bear children, but Hannah can't bear children. So you can imagine Hannah being, being tormented on a daily basis by Penina because Hannah cannot bear children. But Hannah has a promise. She knows in the word of God that children are a gift from God. This time she went to the temple, she prayed and she says to God, God, if you can give me a child, I'll take back this child and plant him back into your kingdom. Guess what? Hannah has been waiting for a child for this, for this long. Once he held that child, he had the power to change her mind and say, no, I'm not giving away this child. But Hannah became faithful to the promise that he made to God and gave back the child back to God. And guess what? Hannah bear children after children after children because of her courageous faith. There's a woman by the name of Rebecca. Rebecca is just a young girl by the age of 16, uh, 17 year old. Uh, what surprises me about Rebecca is that Rebecca agreed to get married to a man that he has never seen with the naked eyes. Think about it. She, she, she agreed to get married to a man whom she has never seen with a naked. She, she only heard the report about this man and she agreed to get married to this man. There's a woman by the name of uh, Jacobeth. Jacobeth, she's the mother of Moses. Moses, the one who delivered the people of, is of Israel from captivity of Egypt. By the time Moses was born, a decree was released by King Pharaoh to kill all the Hebrew kids from the age of zero to the age of two years old. And Moses was born during that season. But Jacobeth, she decided to give away her child for this boy to grow in the palace of Egypt so that the promise of God at the right time should be fulfilled for Moses to be the deliverer of God's people. Imagine if Jacobeth could have changed her mind. That means Moses could have been killed during that time. That is a courageous woman. Another one is Docas. Docas, uh, I call her a humanitarian. Docas used to take care of the needy in the community. When it's winter, he would, he would organize clothes and give away to the needy. When, when people are hungry, he would organize food puzzles to give away to the needy families. Then it happened that Docas died. After she died, then they called Peter, the apostle. They, when, when Peter arrived, they showed Peter the good works that Jacobeth was doing in the community. That means this woman, she's not a dying type. Peter had to pray for Docas to come back from the dead and become alive again because of the good work that this lady used to do in the community. There are three ladies mentioned in the book of Mark 16, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. They went to the tomb and anointed the body of Jesus. These three women, I call them devoted disciples of Jesus. At the 11th hour where Jesus needed support, of his disciples. All of them, they deserted him. But these three women, they went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. If that is not a courageous act, I don't know what is the meaning of courage. Lastly, there's a woman by the, man, by the name of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, when the angel appeared to her and told her the news that she's going to bear a child and call him Jesus. This Jesus is going to become the savior of the whole world. She was about the age of about 16 and 17. She was still at the stage of adolescent. Look at this. Mary, she sacrificed her adolescent stage, got pregnant by the Holy Spirit in order to give birth to the savior of the world. She had the right to say, no, I want to enjoy my adolescent stage. But no, she allowed her body to be used by God in order to give birth to the savior of the world. Somebody wrote a song uh, titled, Mary, Did You Know? I don't know who wrote the song, but you can Google it. The, the lyrics are very powerful. In, in the song, it says, Mary, did you know that when you delivered this child in Bethlehem that night, did you know that this child, sooner or later, he'll be the one who deliver you from the pit of hell? 
Mary, did you know that when you held this child in your hands and you kissed this baby, did you know that you were kissing the face of God who made the universe? Mary, did you know that when you bathed this little baby in a bath somewhere, that you were cleaning this baby from all the death that were in his body? But did you know that one day this body, this child, will clean away the sins in your life? Mary, did you know? I'm talking to a mother this morning who might be in a corner who might be going through trials and tribulation, who might be going through challenges and you don't understand, why me, Lord? Why am I going through this? I don't understand. I don't know why I'm going through challenges. I want to draw your attention to what Jesus told, I mean, God told the serpent in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He says to the serpent, the seed of a woman will bruise your head. The seed that the woman will produce shall bruise your head. And guess what? Whenever the devil sees a woman, he's reminded that the seed of a woman will bruise my head. He's not against you. He doesn't hate you. He hates what you can produce. The devil is fighting your seed. No wonder why you have gone through too many miscarriages. No wonder why you have experienced still bonds. No wonder why you went through all these challenges of, of barrenness in your season. The devil is not against you, but is against what you are capable of producing. That's what he's fighting. He knows the seed of a woman will one day bruise his head. His war is against the seed. It's against what you are capable of doing. That's why you are facing too many challenges and trials. I want to pick up a story in the Bible, in the book of Mark chapter number 7, of a woman who was also facing a trial. It's not just a woman, but she's a mother, and a mother, the daughter somewhere, the devil, has taken over, over the seed of this woman. So I wanted to lift up the scripture. If you've got a Bible, open with me to the book of Mark chapter number 7. We are reading the part of scripture from verse number 24. Mark chapter number 7, we are reading from verse number 24. Mark Chapter number 7, we are reading from verse number 24. It reads thus, if you've got it. It says, And Jesus arose and went from there to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he went into a house and did not want anyone to know that he was there. Meaning he went in as a secret agent. But it was not possible for him to be hidden. My God, my God, my God. It was not possible for Jesus to be hidden. He went into a house secretly. It might have happened he went there during the night, but it was not it was not possible for him to be hidden. The house in this context, it represents your body. Remember the scripture says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God himself, he resides inside your body. He lives inside of you. That is his residential place. And once Jesus is in you, there is no way you can hide Jesus on the inside of you. Remember the incident in the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus tells his disciples, eh, one of you is going to betray me. Uh, I'm going to be crucified on the cross and I'm going to die and I'm going to raise again on the third day and all of you are going to desert me. And Peter said, no, 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 not, not me. They, they can disown you. I will never de deny you. I'm going to stick with you until, until the end. And Jesus tells him, before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. Guess what? Jesus is arrested. He, wants, he went to court. They, they cross-questioned him the whole night and it was winter, it was cold. Now Peter was standing uh, uh, somewhere at the fire with some of the people who were standing there. Then one of the bystanders who were sitting there with Peter, he looks at Peter, he said, Peter, you are one of the disciples of Jesus. You know why? Even your language 
your language denies you, disowns you. You, you try to pretend to speak our language, but your, your language, your, your accent is betraying you. Meaning, Peter, Peter, when they told him you were his disciple, he said, no, 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 I don't know that man. Don't, don't, don't even attach me to that man. But, but he never realized that Jesus in him can never be hidden. He tried to disown Jesus, but his accent betrays him that you are one of them. You speak like Jesus, even though you can disown him, but you can't hide the Jesus that is on the inside of you. There's an incident in the book of Acts chapter 3 whereby Peter and John are going to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. And the Bible says when they arrived at the gate, they saw a man who was crippled. This man was begging for money. And Peter gazed at him and told him, silver and gold we don't have now. But we give you what we have. In the name of Jesus, rise up. And walk. And the Bible says they pulled that man on his feet and he started walking. And the crowd came because they were so excited to see the miracles. And it gave the opportunity for, pre for Peter to preach to these people. And the Bible says almost 5,000 people got saved in one sermon. 5,000 people got saved in one sermon. When Jesus is in you, you can preach one sermon one day and you fill up a church with more than 5,000 people. People. And there was a commotion in the city and the police came and they arrested Peter and John and took them to prison because it was late in the afternoon. Then they decided to go to court the next morning. They called all the high priests, the Boanas, Boananias, Bo Kephas, and all of them. They came and the court started and they start cross-questioning these guys. How, with, with, with what power did you heal this man? How can you preach like this? How, where, where did you get this knowledge? We know that you are, you are not learned like we are. You didn't go to the best institution like we how did you become who you are today and then they started caucusing in their own chamber the 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 high priest i i like what they said they said we we can't deny that a miracle happened we can't deny that 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 crippled man is now healed we can't deny that these two guys they performed that miracle but now let's take a resolution let us stop them from preaching in the name of Jesus. They can preach any sermon, it's okay, but they must never quote the name of Jesus. Why? They were trying to hide the Jesus in them, not realizing Jesus cannot be hidden. That's why Paul calls him Christ in you, the hope of glory. My God. Once Jesus got into the house, he wanted just to go secretly, but he could not be hidden. Once Jesus is in you, he cannot be hidden. Your language will attach to the language of Jesus. Your actions must be, must, must be attached to the action of Jesus. Everything that you do must align to the will of God in your life. When Jesus is in you, he cannot be hidden. Verse 25. Instead, that once a woman whose little daughter, who had an unclean spirit, heard about Jesus. And she came and flung herself down at the feet of Jesus. This woman is not just an ordinary woman. She's a mother. She's got a daughter. But a daughter has got an unclean spirit. There's a demon tormenting her daughter. We don't know how long. This demon has been tormenting a daughter. But this woman, the Bible says, she heard about Jesus. She has never seen Jesus with her naked eyes. She heard about Jesus. She has never seen Jesus preaching on TV. She heard about Jesus. She has never heard Jesus preaching on a radio. She heard about Jesus. And she came and threw herself at the feet of Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She heard. That somewhere in Bethany, there was a man by the name of Lazarus. This man, the Bible says he died. And he was in the tomb for four days. His body was starting to decompose. But when Jesus came into the picture, the life came back to the body of a dead man who has been buried for four days. 
She heard about the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. The Bible says this woman, she went from one doctor to the other. She even spent her medical aid. But instead of getting better, she grew worse. And she made a decision that I'm going to come behind Jesus. Even if I can touch the garment of Jesus, I shall be made whole. She heard about a man who was born blind. And the Bible says, Jesus, she spit on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he put it on the eyes of this man who was born blind blind and he told this man go and wash at the pool of Siloam and the man went there and he washed and he recovered his side when the Pharisees came to him they asked him who's the man who healed you this man is a sinner and the blind man who now can see he told them I don't know this Jesus I've never seen him with my naked eyes I don't care if he's a sinner or not all that I know is that I was once blind, but now I can see. This woman, she heard about that man who was at the pool of Bethesda with an infinity in his body for 38 years, waiting for the angel to come and shake the water so that somebody can push him into the pool. But she came across Jesus, and this man was healed immediately. This woman, she heard about what Jesus did to the 5,000 people by feeding them with two fish and five loaves. She heard about Jesus. She has never seen Jesus, but she heard the good news concerning Jesus. And the Bible says she came and threw herself at the feet of Jesus. Her daughter is tormented by an evil spirit back at home. Desperate situations they provoke this woman to go out of the house and go after jesus she has never seen jesus she heard about jesus how many of us are waiting for evidence before we can act on what god had told us verse 26 now the woman was a greek or a gentile a syro Phoenician by nationality. And she kept begging him to drive the demon out of her little daughter. The Bible says this woman was a Greek. She was a Gentile. Now, if it was me and you who were writing the incident in the book of Mark, we would not have disclosed the nationality of this woman because me and you we can relate to the status of this woman as a gentile there was no way we would have disclosed that this woman was a greek she was a gentile but mark put it there in the open that this woman she was a gentile by the way the bible has got a record of many women that Jesus healed and they never quoted their names. They never quoted their I mean, there's, there's an incident of the woman with an issue of blood. We know her as the woman. We don't know if she was a Greek or a Jew. But why, why, Mark, do you have to disclose that this woman, she was a Greek and she was also a Gentile? That means Mark knows something that other people don't know. The reason why Mark disclosed here is because you remember in Romans 1, 16 paul writes a letter to the church in rome he says in verse 16 i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus because the gospel of jesus is the power of god unto salvation to anyone who believes to the jew first and then later on to the greeks that's why mark disclosed because mark is a jew and he knows very well that the benefits of the gospel at this time, they are only meant for the Jews. That's why he disclosed the nationality of this woman that she doesn't qualify to receive whatever she needs from Jesus. So that means if Jesus decides to drive out a demon out of the daughter of this woman, 
Jesus will be, break, will be breaking the same law that he made. It is Jesus who told his disciples, go out and preach the gospel, but don't take it first to the Gentiles. Take it first to the Jews. The time of the Gentiles will come. So that means if Jesus cast out the demon out of the daughter of this woman, he'll be breaking the same law that Jesus made. Verse 27, And Jesus said to her, First let the children be fed, for it is not becoming or proper or right to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. I don't care how you look at this scripture. Somebody is being called the dog. Somebody is being called the dog here. I know we love Jesus, but somebody is being called a dog. This is where most of us will be taking the exit door. Because I don't care how humiliated I can be. I don't care how poor I can be. Please don't call me a dog. You see, pride has clouded our eyes to the point whereby we can reject help standing right in front of us. This woman, she's been called a dog, but her daughter at home, she has been tormented by this demon. Don't forget, uh, uh, John 10, 10 says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to this. So that means the primary purpose of this demon is to kill that young girl at home. Desperate measures, they require you to go out and get the help, even if you have been called a dog. Your children are well at home. Mine is, is, is tormented by a demon. You can call me names. You can call me whatever you call me. I don't care. I'm going to take a desperate measure for my daughter to be healed. Somebody has been called a dog. But desperate times, they provoke this woman to take desperate measures to get to Jesus. Verse 28, But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the small pups under the table, they eat the little children's scraps of food. Meaning even the little dogs under the table, they eat the crumbs that falls from the table. The dogs know they've got a right of leftovers. The dogs know they don't have to eat on the table, but they know the bones that are left, the meat that is left in the bones, it doesn't go to the dustbin. They know, they know, they qualify to get the leftovers. I like, I like what, what Matthew says when he narrated the same story. Matthew says, uh, this woman, she came, kneeled, and worshipped him. That is what Matthew says. She came and kneeled before Jesus and worshipped him. In another words, he paid obeisance. To Jesus. That was the moment where she could have taken an exit dog. But as soon as they call her a dog, this woman came and worshipped Jesus. You remember Luke chapter number 4? The devil takes Jesus to a high mountain. He shows him all the wealth of the world in a moment of time. And he tells Jesus, if you can worship me, I'm going to give them to you because they have been given to me. Worship does not necessarily mean to kneel down before Jesus. Worship is not an outside act, it's an inside act. What the devil was telling Jesus is that I need you to exchange kingdom. Leave your kingdom and come to my kingdom and be under my authority. Then I will give you all this wealth. Worship is when you put yourself under the authority of God. You remember the incident in John chapter 4? Jesus is having a conversation at the pool, at the, at the well in, in Samaria. We, we we're having a conversation with the woman from Samaria. This woman tells Jesus, you the Jews, you don't worship anywhere else, but you worship at higher places. And Jesus answered her and said to her, the time will come whereby people, they won't seek a place to worship, but the true worshipers shall worship God in truth and in spirit. Worship is an inner thing. It's not an outside thing. I can roll on the floor. I can kneel before God. That doesn't mean I worship him, but worship is a matter of the heart. That's why David was called 
a man after God's heart because he knew that even if he has messed up, he knew his way back to God. Instead of this woman taking an exit dog and leaving because he's been called a dog, the Bible says he kneeled before Jesus and worshipped him. I can imagine her singing a song. Sitten sidiba samadi aleta ring ya tifelo diba seu eleng sethari mata sona kebopilo. No, 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 you don't understand. You are, you, are, you are a dog. You don't qualify to eat at the, at the table. I do understand. But by its ADB, Bautwana le nababansu. Basike na sidi baseka tumelo. And a batu hating. Bali baba suewu. Because your mercy and your grace cannot allow me to stand outside while the door it's open for anybody to come in. I know, I know it's not yet my time, but your grace can do a mystery in my life. I can imagine singing a song. Today. Make it a cooler, Kamika, Kantum, Ya Jehovah. And she knew that by worshiping God, she's touching the heart of God. Even Jesus knew it is not the time for this woman, but he knew that the worship, it changes everything. I know I made the laws. I know it's not yet your time, but worship changes everything. Worship turns the tables around. And the Bible says in verse 29, and Jesus said to her, because of this saying, because of this worship, you may go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter permanently. Worship to change the seasons. Worship change the time. Worship change the laws. This woman who did not qualify to get the blessing, but because she was desperate, her worship changed the situation. Her daughter was delivered from that demon. The question is, how desperate are you? Don't allow your pride to stand before your breakthrough. In fact, your breakthrough is just a meter away from your knees. All that God requires for you is just to give him the honor and the glory. Even in the midst of pain. In all situations, desperate times will provoke you to take desperate measures. Father, I pray for the woman who's listening to my voice, the mother who's listening to my voice. They might be facing challenges, the valley that they are in. Right now, I pray, raise a new song on the inside of them to take them out of their valley. It's just one step for them to get their breakthrough. May the Lord keep you and bless you. May the Lord lift up his countenances on you and give you peace. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you the unmerited favor of God. I decree and I declare today is the last day that you spend in that valley you are coming out in Jesus name and somebody who agrees let me hear you say amen and amen and amen my God my God desperate times provokes you to take desperate measures if you have never received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior I don't want to close you outside I want to give you this opportunity, I need you to pray, repeat after me, so that your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now, just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived before you. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me now with the blood of Jesus and make me a brand new person in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, know that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your life shall never ever be the same again. And I encourage you to find a church that is preaching faith that is based on the Bible. If you can't find your church, if you are in the vicinity of Tabazimbi, you can come and join us. The details of our church will display them on the screen right now after we close. And God keep on blessing you, continue to bless you until you become fully blessed and happy. Mother's day and keep walking by faith in Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen.